So how's this going? Have you remembered the four steps? I think those are crucial. One, isolate, right? Two, cast. Three, absolute value to determine the fader reference. Four, apply the fader reference to give you the possible angles, okay? All the other angles, right? Okay, really important. But the other thing that seems to come out and kind of smack us in the head all the time is the fact that there's a restriction. Interesting. Let's look at this question because we have a pretty nasty restriction there, don't we? If we use that to our advantage, well, let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. Do you see this quadratic yet? If you don't, again, these are all cosecants. Just put an A over top of it. You have an A squared minus 3A minus 28 equals to 0. There you go. Solve it. That's a PSA 1. Those should be pretty easy to solve, right? Those should be very easy to solve. So you've got an A equals 2 or A minus 7, right? And an A plus 4. There's, there's your values. Equals to 0. Okay. So this means an A minus 7 equals to 0 and A plus 4 equals to 0. So let's put in that cosecant that we had before that we took out earlier to make this nice and simple. So this is going to be the cosecant of X minus 7 equals to 0. This is the cosecant of X plus 4 equals to 0. And let's solve this. All right, bring this over. Cosecant X equals to 7. And cosecant X equals to, yep, minus 4. Now, we've done the isolate. Let's do the cast. But remember, watch out for our restriction. That's going to be really important because it's going to save us a whole bunch of time. And let me show you why. Okay, so this is between 0 and 180 degrees. So my answer's got to be in degrees then. That's important to realize. Okay, the second thing here to realize is that we're dealing here from 0 to 180 means add sugar to coffee. We're dealing with positive signs. We're not dealing with the negative sign anymore, right? Okay, now why did I say sign? Because you know and I know that a cosecant is the sine of x 1 over 7th and the sine of x negative 1 over 4. But look at this. Signs cannot be negative based on our restriction. So guess what? We don't have to do that part. We don't have to. It's gone. It's history. Bye-bye. See you later. You're negative. Not going to deal with you. Right? So the only thing that you need to deal with then is this guy right here. The fact that you have sine x equals to 1 seventh. Cool. Okay. So take the We've done the cast. Take the absolute value of this. Where is sine x 1 7th? Now, notice that that doesn't fall into any of the trig ratios that we're used to, right? That's not pi over 2. That's not 1 half. That's not the root 2 over 2 or any of that other stuff. So how do we solve this? Grab your calculator. And just note that we had sine x, right, equals to 1 7th. Just like we did in math 10, we did minus sine minus or sine to the minus 1, sine to the minus 1. That cancels everything on this side. So x equals 2 inverse sine of 1 7th. Oh, perfect. Let's figure out what that is. Second inverse sine of 1 divided by 7. There's the 1 7th. Punch it. I get 8.2 degrees. There's your fader reference. Your fader reference then is, what was it? 8.2 degrees. Okay. 8.2 degrees. Now, remember, according to your cast rule, it could be here or it could be here because those are the two positive areas for sine. Okay, so let's let that be 8.2 degrees. Let's let that fader reference be 8.2 degrees and let's figure it out. So obviously our answer then is going to be 8.2 degrees for the first guy here. And then for this guy, oh, take the 180, subtract the 8.2 off that. That's going to give you 171.8. 171.8 degrees. Oh, that was really, really tough now, wasn't it? Okay, now, that's it. I, I was about to add some to that, but I guess not. We're done.